Okay, we're looking at rights issues and the effect that they have on share prices. If you remember, when we first started the course, we talked about a company raising capital, and the capital is the uh, amount of money they need to, to run their business. And they can either go to a bank and get it, but what they can do to float on the market is they want the dollars, which is the capital, and they release shares on the market, and shareholders buy them. What that means is these guys buy them for cash and the company gets the capital it needs and these guys become part owners in the company. Now later on down the track they can't refloat the company because it's already there. So the only way they can get more capital, the only way they can raise more capital is either go to a bank and borrow the money which has an interest rate attached to it which could be nasty or they could do a rights issue. Now a rights issue are shares offered on a pro rata basis to shareholders. Now pro rata just means like a one to four in a ratio. So for every four shares you own, you are entitled to one at a discount. Okay, so it makes it attractive to shareholders. So you can buy these shares at a discount and you pay dollars for it. You pay dollars for these rights issues and the money goes into the company. So therefore they get their capital they get money to work with, you guys get extra shares, and it all works out well. What tends to happen though is theoretically the market price will drop after a right to issue. Now let's have a look at why this happens. Let's pretend that we've got our one to four rights issue. So for every four shares you own, you're entitled to get one for free. And let's say it's at 50 cents. So it's a one for four rights issue at 50 cents. So originally, you've got these four shares that are a dollar each. They're trading at a dollar, which is worth four bucks. When the rights issue comes out, you've still got your four shares that were worth a dollar, and you've got a fifth one there for 50 cents, which now is worth 450. But you've got five shares here. So instead of four shares, you've got five, and instead of four dollars, you've got four dollars fifty worth. So if you go four dollars fifty divided by five, you end up with 90 cents. So what that's done is it's dropped the share price from a dollar down to 90 cents because there are more shares on the market. People might think this is unattractive but you get more shares at a discount. You have a bigger portfolio so if the shares go up you've got more scope to making more of a gain. So that's why people do it. So let's have a look at the different types of rights issues. There are two types that are, that are around. One is renounceable rights these are the most flexible ones. This is when you can sell the rights to someone else, or you can not purchase them and the company takes them back, or you can take up the rights. The term taking up the rights means to actually buy those rights. The non-renounceable rights are the other version. Uh, you only have two options for this. You can either take them up, which means buy them, or let them lapse, which means you let the company take them back. So obviously, if a company is going to let out renounceable rights, for you as a shareholder, it gives you more options. You can either buy them, you can sell them to someone else, or give them back to the company. So let's have a look at a typical kind of question and work out how you'd solve it all. So BFP announces a renounceable 1 to 5 rights issues at $2.50. The shares are currently trading on the market at 335. Bronte owns 4,000 shares in the company. How many BFPs will, BFP shares will Bronte be entitled to? Now it's a one for five rights issue. So at the moment, he has 4,000 shares. Divided by five gives you 800. So he will be entitled to 800 shares in this rights issue. How much will it cost him? Well, if he can buy the 800 shares and buys the whole lot of them, they're at $2.50 each. Now, this will cost him a grand total of $2,000. There is no brokerage and no GST in rights issues. And because this is like when they were first floated on the market. So the money is going straight to the company. It's not going through a broker. It's going straight to the company. So there's no brokerage or GST. The next kind of thing we'd like to know is calculate the expected price of BFP 
after the rights issue. So what happens to the share price after the rights issue? And this is what we did before. So we have currently, you've got five shares on the market that are trading at $3.35 each. That's your three dollars value. That's the market value. So you've got three shares at three thirty-five, and that's worth sixteen seventy-five. One new rights issue comes out. That's at two dollars fifty, which is at that discount. Which means that a grand total of nineteen dollars twenty-five worth of shares you have. Now, we have six shares now. Five add one is six. Nineteen. 25 is what they're worth, so it drops the share price down to 321, which you know isn't that bad considering that they started at 335. So when the rights issue is done, because there are more shares on the market, it waters it down to 321, and you as a shareholder um, has to kind of wear that drop in price. What's the value of a right on the market? So let's think that you might be wanting to sell these rights rather than buy them. What's the value of a right? Well, in that last question, we worked out that on the market they're worth three dollars twenty-one. That's the theoretical share price once the once the rights issue has been released. They are being sold to other people at two fifty. So the theoretical value of a right is seventy-one cents. So each of these rights are worth seventy-one cents. Part E. How much would Bronte get if he sold his rights? Now, if they're renounceable rights, you can sell them. So you could put these up on the market. So you could sell all 800 shares that you're entitled to at 71 cents each, and you'll get $568 back. So uh, that does not count include GST and brokerage, which you have to take into account as well. But roughly, you get $568 back. So you can either buy the rights and increase your portfolio, or you can sell the rights and get $568 for it. So either way, it's not a bad thing for shareholders, and it's a very good thing for the company because they raise capital and shareholders come away happy as well. <laughs>